All right, welcome back, guys. So in this video, we're going to go over an example of um, hypothesis testing and all the steps that I need to uh, show, at least for all class. Every instructor does this differently. Uh, I have my uh, steps list now, uh, and it takes about a whole page here. And this, this is what you expect to see on the quiz exam in terms of what I'm looking for. Um, so this is hypothesis testing the on proportion, uh, and I'm going to go over each part and explain what exactly I'm asking and, and how, do you, how do we do it. Um, so this example says that a study of sleepwalking or nocturnal wandering was described in Neurology Magazine and it excludes information that 29.2% of 19,136 American adults have sleepwalked. So this, this tells us that there's a study and that study consists of, of 19,000 American adults and out of that 19,000, uh, around 29.2% reported that they, they are um, sleepwalkers. Um, a report stating that Fewer than 30% adults have, have slept walked. Um, so this here, this is what the report stated. Um, and um, it says that use 0.1 significant level to test the claim that for the adult population, um, the proportion of those who have slept walked is less than 30%. So there, there it is. And, the, and some problem will tell us what the claim is supposed to be. And some problem we kind of have to read more than to understand what the claim is. So this here is saying that use the alpha of 10% significant level to test the claim that the proportion of the adults who are sleepwalkers is less than 30%. Um, so that's that's the claim. Okay. Um, and and we want we want to look at this study. We want to look at this study result here and see, okay, is is this, you know, is this claim value here? Okay, compared to this 29.2%, is that difference by 0.8% significant enough for us to say that the claim value is not, you know, supported by the evidence there? Okay, so that's that's where we're going. So, the, so to state the claim, uh, we start with P is the proportion of sleepwalker is less than 30%. So the way we word this, we say that the proportion or the percentage of uh, those... Who have slept walk is less than thirty percent. Okay, so that's how we interpret the claim there. So now we state the no hypothesis in symbolic form or in in word form. Either way is fine. So we say the no hypothesis h sub o is the no hypothesis. It's always equal to the claim value, which is thirty percent. And the alternative is to know as eight sub one is always opposite to the no hypothesis. In this case, opposite is one of these has to be the claim here. So uh, the um the no is equal to point three. This this here this is referring to you know p is greater than or equal to point three, but we only use we only use the equal part because we need we need to look at a single distribution value. Um, so if p equals point three is really stand for p is greater than or equal to point three, then the opposite statement to that is p is less than point three. In this case, in this case is the claim itself, the claim. That's what we're gonna make a note of. That is the claim, and because because our alternative has a less than equal sign, so this tell us this is the left tail test okay so a critical value is going to be on the left side of the graph decide on significant level that's part d so this here this is usually you know some example will give us a significant level some doesn't and you're going to have to decide as an audience or as a per, you know as a student when you do this problem is you decide where is the cutoff value is you you know we have control over that if this problem is given to us but some problem it isn't given then we use standard level of 0.05 so we're going to use 0.1 because that's what we're given there. So significant level is going to be 0.1. Okay. Um, compute the test statistics. So this is hypothesis testing on proportion. So the test statistics is going to be call this z star. It's going to be this formula p hat minus p the claim value over uh, the claim value and then q divided by n and then the square root of that. Okay, so that's the formula for the test statistics. Over here, let's go ahead and make a note of what we're given here. So we're given that n is 19,136, and we're given that p hat is 0.292. That means q hat, oh, we don't need q hat here. Um, the, um, 
we need to know what P is. So P is the claim value proportion parameter. So that's going to be 0.3. That means Q is going to be 1 minus that. So that's 0.7. I think we have everything we need to plug in the formula and get the test statistics. So we have, we have 2.292 minus 0.3 divided by 0.3 times 0.7 over 19136 square root of that if you plug this into your calculator correctly and do the math uh, just be careful and in, in, uh, type this in certain order of operation uh, it's going to give us a, a test statistics of negative 2.41 so that is the test statistics okay so that's the test statistics okay that tell us that if if the proportion of the population of people who are sleepwalkers indeed 30 percent the chance or or to get a sample proportion of 29.2 percent from a, a sample of 19,000, uh, that sample itself is almost three standard deviation below what the claim value is okay so i'm gonna ask i'm gonna i'm gonna um estimate that this this test statistics with the negative 2.41, that's a that's the negative 2.41 standard deviation below the claim value. Then I'm gonna say that that is the chance to obtain such sample proportion is it's gonna be below 10% alpha is given here. So let's find out. Okay. So there's two um approach that you can do uh, or we can do. You can get uh you can pick one of these. Okay. You don't have to do both. So just do one. Okay. Just do one of these method okay i'm going to show you guys both methods so let's start with let's start with either the p-value or the critical value let's start with the p-value so the p-value uh, approach is pretty simple okay but kind of kind of difficult to interpret the p-value so um it's easy to get the answer but not so easy to really understand what the answer means um so for the p-value method we set up our uh by the way, the geometric in interpretation is drawing the graph, label um, everything, and, and understand what the answer means. So that's what the geometric interpretation is. I'm going to go ahead and draw the bell curve. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to go ahead and label, since it's a left tail test, so it's going to be on this side. Okay. We're going to label our test statistics. Okay. This is, this is our p hat here. That p hat is... is is um yeah 0.292 so 0.292 and then this is our our claim value this is a claim value of 0.3 okay and then the test statistics is the test statistic is that p hat the sample proportion we found is negative 2.41 below the claim value below the mean or the proportion the claim value Okay, we want we want to find out what's the p value. So the p value is the probability. What is that probability? Okay, what is that chance of obtaining such sample proportion or more extreme? What what would be that probability? Well, we can do normal CDF to find out that probability. It's gonna be negative ninety nine comma negative two point four one. So that probability, that p value, that chance is gonna be. 0.007, so it's less than 1% there. Okay, I think I did the math correctly. Let me do the game to be sure. Negative 2.41. Okay, um, let's do 8. 0.08, okay. So we're saying that, okay, if if it was true that the claim value is 30% for the proportion of adults who are sleepwalkers, uh, the probability of obtaining a sample proportion that is as close or more extreme or you know reasonably close that is you know um 29.2 percent is is under one percent that's really low well that means the no hypothesis is not quite supported based on the evidence okay it's kind of like saying this here if if this if this here if this no hypothesis was true we would expect we will expect from a random sample of 19,000, we expect to get a sample portion that is close to, reasonably close to 0.3. But, again, is 0.292 reasonably close to 0.3? Subjectively, yeah, that's pretty close. 
that's only off by point oh oh eight, right? But when we crunch into the formula, when we when we, when we plug things in the formula, the math doesn't really show that. It shows that this here, if we look at the sample distribution of the sample means, uh, excuse me, proportion with the sample size of nineteen thousand, this p hat of point two nine two is significantly below the claim value point three. Therefore, the no hypothesis is not supported, it's not true, or it's based on the sample evidence, of course. Um, so going back to the p-value uh, approach, we draw the graph, we label the test statistics, we find the p-value, and then we want to make a note of this here. We want to make a note that we, that the p-value from there, the p-value we found that was just 0.08, is less than alpha. That's what we were going to get out of that. Alpha is 0.1, so that's greater than the p-value, okay? Uh, the second method is called the critical value approach. So critical value method. Okay. In this method here, we're going to set up a, a boundary or critical value that separate the critical region from the non-critical region. So again, we're going to draw a bell shaped curve. Okay. And since this is left tail test, so we are going to find a critical value on the left side. And this shaded region, this is the critical region. And this critical region has a probability of 10%. That's our alpha. Okay. And the critical value, the critical value is going to be um, negative 1.28. Okay. So that's, that's the critical value. Okay, negative 1.28. Well, where is our test statistic? Where is our sample um, proportion falls in? Well, our sample proportion has a test statistic of negative 2.41. So that's way over here. Maybe use different color here. Let me use, let me use green, light green. Okay, here is our sample data or sample uh, proportion. Okay, so that's the test statistics. Okay. That test statistics from the sample we had is way over here. That's that's the negative 2.41. Okay. That means it's in the critical region. Okay. So we say that we want to make a note of this here. We're gonna we want to say that um, the test statistics. Okay. It is in the critical region. Okay. That's what we want to make a note of. That will determine a conclusion. Okay. So there it is. We find the p-value or we find the critical uh, value that separate the, the non-critical region from the critical region. And then the test statistic fall in that. Um, so how do we write the conclusion? Okay. So there's two parts I want you guys to write when it comes to conclusion. Okay. The first part is state the template of the conclusion. We always start with the level of significant at the point one level of significant. Remember, this is this is the probability of making type one error. Um, our p-value that we found is less than alpha or uh, the test statistics, right? falls in the critical region. Okay, so two different ways of interpreting it. Either we use the p-value or we use the critical value approach and show that. Okay, so either one that will work. Um, at the five, at the ten percent level of significant, um, uh, the p-value is less than alpha. Um, that means that means that we have sufficient evidence to reject the no hypothesis and we favor the alternative okay so that's the conclusion there okay uh, if we reject the no, we will favor the alternative. Okay. The second part of writing the conclusion is how do we tie or find in back to the original claim? Okay. So say interpret your answer to re regarding the claim. So first, you do the explanation of the decision. 
whether we reject the null or not reject the null. And then we write the second sentence to explain whether our evidence support the claim or not support the claim. Okay. Um, so let's go back to this here, the second part. Okay. Um, so this is, we're going to address the original claim. We're going to say, since we reject the evidence show that we reject the null hypothesis and we favor the alternative, that's what we did. Okay. And then the alternative is the claim itself. The claim. Okay. So if we support the, the, oh, if we support, if we favor H1 and reject the HO here, but H1 or the alternative is the claim itself. Okay. That tells us that, okay. We have enough evidence to support the claim because the claim is h1 that is the proportion of the proportion of um the proportion of sleepwalkers is less than 0.3 all right so it's kind of wordy two different part there but it really tie up everything what we've done all this all this math here you know get to this part here this is what we want to get to is is being able to interpret our final answer